Hello everyone, my name is John Marsh and I'm the co-CEO and co-founder of Logos, which is part of ESR. Today I'm joined by Trent Eilif, who is the other co-CEO and founder, and Darren Searle, head of our Australia and New Zealand business, and all of us will provide an overview of Logos. Logos is a logistics property and infrastructure real estate specialist. We provide innovative solar, intermodal, and data center solutions, sourcing land and facilities, and developing and managing assets for some of the world's leading investors. Logos has grown organically over the past 13 years through actively partnering with our tenant customers and investors across multiple countries to deliver institutional quality logistics property solutions. This partnership approach sees us now operating in 10 countries across the Asia Pacific with 11 million square meters of property owned and under development. Our competitive advantage is providing an end-to-end -end property solution from sourcing, developing, managing, and divesting logistics property. And as we grow, we are increasing our focus on the infrastructure sector, covering data centers, solar, and renewables, which Trent will speak to. Over the last five years, we have leveraged our strong market and customer relationships, sourcing 5.2 billion of transactions, including two of Australia's largest logistics and intermodal development opportunities in Mascot and Moorbank. A foundation of our business is our development capability, where we bring our international ex expertise into local markets to plan, design, and deliver institutional grade facilities and meet the increasing demand in automation, high bay, cold storage, and intermodal. Our in-house asset, property, and investment management teams support the business over the venture life cycle with strong institutional and customer partners across multiple countries, which has supported our growth. Our strategy is focused on growing AUM, and as our development funds near their review dates, we look to recapitalize or recycle these assets into new, new core funds or within the ES Logos managed REIT. A recent example of this was the recycling of some of our Australian assets into ELOG, with the REIT acquiring properties worth up to 600 million from our Australian development funds. Leveraging our strong partnership approach with new and existing capital partners and the strong demand for institutional grade assets, Logos raised one billion of equity during 2022. We have a total of four billion in dry powder that will allow us to deliver on the many opportunities we continue to see across the region. We currently have 4.3 billion in construction underway and I would like to highlight that several key projects in Australia, that is Mascot, Eastern Creek and Craigieburn, have commenced but are not included within the work in progress. Due to the highly specialised nature of these projects and Australian regulatory requirements, these projects have not yet been included as con construction starts and reflect another 2.2 billion of additional WIP. On completion of our full development pipeline, Logos total GLA sits at 11.3 million square metres. I'll now hand over to Trent to go through the themes and outlook. Thank you, John. Uh, firstly, Abhijit and Joe are a hard act to follow, so I'll try and try and keep up with that. So thank you guys, and thanks for the overview. So firstly, I'd like to touch on three key priorities uh, that we're focused on as a group. First one, continue to support our customer growth across the region, including a focus on high value projects and scalable opportunities. Secondly, expanding into the growth sectors of infrastructure and renewables. And thirdly, our unwavering commitment to sustainability, which ultimately underlies all we do. Now, as John mentioned, Logos has grown organically over the last 13 years through actively partnering with our tenant customers and investors across multiple countries. Now, we remain focused on supporting our customer growth as they respond to the changing market requirements driven by advancements in technology, the reshaping of global supply chains, and a drive to strengthen food security. 
Now, I'll highlight a few of the key examples of our partnership approach in action. The first one I'll talk about is LF Logistics. Now, we've been working with LF Logistics. Now, they're a third party, a global third party logistics operator. We've been working with them since 2016, where we first built a three story, one, uh, one million square feet facility in our Shanghai Logistics Center in Shanghai. As a result of that, LF entrusted us to develop its first Australian facility in Sydney, and that was to help support their expansion into this market. Since then, we've also partnered with them in Indonesia and Singapore. Now, Amazon tells a similar story, where we first started our relationship in Bangalore, in India, and built a million square feet facility for them a few years ago. That's now seen us extend that relationship into both Australia and Singapore. In our Australia and New Zealand business, another example, we've leveraged many of our relationships across both Australia and New Zealand, and we're also looking to expand many of those relationships into Asia with many, many sort of opportunities underway at the moment. Now, our partnership with our investors tells a similar story. As part of the enlarged ESR group, uh, we have provided investors <clears throat> a one-stop solution to invest in logistics and infrastructure opportunities across the region. Now, many of our LPs are investing in more than one Logos or ESR venture, be it within the same market across the region. Now, some examples of this are Ivanhoe Cambridge. Now, Ivanhoe Cambridge first invested with us in China in 2015, and they've since invested with us in five other countries, including Australia, Singapore, Indonesia, China, and also India. GRC is another example of this. Now, GRC was our first LP in the Australian market in 2010. They now invest with us in four countries, including China, Korea, Vietnam, and New Zealand, in addition to the other investments across the enlarged DSR platform. Now, other LP multi-country relationships include Boundvest, Mobadla, and Manulife. Now, this repeat business is a key differentiator of Logos and the enlarged DSR business, and it's testament to the strong relationships and unique opportunities and solutions that we're able to provide. Now, in line with our commitment of creating a carbon neutral portfolio by 2030, we're delivering sustainable solutions for our customers and the market. Now, we're seeing strong growth opportunities in the infrastructure and renewable sector. We believe Logos Logistics expertise, a drive to be ahead of the curve with technology and market changes, relationships with our customers and capital partners, makes us well placed to deliver on these initiatives. In tackling our renewable energy commitments, we established a joint venture with ENGI. Now, they're the world's largest renewable energy group. We now own and operate one of the largest solar rooftops in Singapore a five megawatt plant, and this is in collaboration with DHL, who occupies the building. Now, our aim here is to ultimately to have all our Logos properties 100% powered by renewable energy by 2030, and this is for all warehouses, cold storage, and data centers. Now, in the data center sector, uh, we've recently completed our first data center in, in Jakarta, in Indonesia. This is a 20 megawatt facility with pure DC as our customer and partner. Now we're continuing to expand this and other data center customer relationships around the region. Look, as a group, we're excited by the opportunities we're seeing in this sector and the significant growth and value for Logos, ESR, our partners in this space and the demand that data storage operate, offers. Now I'd like to hand to, to Darren to talk through two of the high value projects we acquired in the last 18 months. These are in line with our focus on providing great long-term visibility on cash flows and our drive to grow the infrastructure sector within the broader group. Thank you, Darren. Oh, thanks, John and Trent. Let me start with our uh, $2.8 billion more bank intermodal precinct development in Sydney. In a landmark investment in December 21, Logos, uh, Logos Consortia comprising of Logos, Australian Super, T Corp, New South Wales Treasury, AXA and Ivanhoe Cambridge acquired the Moorbank Precinct for $1.1 billion. 
Moorbank is Australia's largest intermodal freight facility operating, offering um, unparalleled industrial warehousing opportunities and rail to port connectivity. The scale of this logistics site, with a range of benefits within a 30 minute drive of major global CBD, has not been seen in Australia before. The development has an end value of 2.8 billion in 2030 and includes 243 hectares of industrial property and infrastructure. There's two intermodal terminals facilitating interstate freight between the capital cities in Australia and an import-export uh, terminal connected to the Botany Port. We intend to build nearly 850,000 square metres, possibly up to a million, on this precinct. And as a warehouse developer, we're working alongside national uh, infrastructure logistics company Cube and the Commonwealth-backed logistics infrastructure developer, the National Intermodal Company. Cube has developed the uh, import-export terminal at the site and is in the process of constructing the interstate terminal. This interstate terminal will connect the trains to Melbourne and Brisbane and will be operated under joint venture operating entity owned by Logos, Cube and the National Intermodal Company in partnership. The Commonwealth Government has provided land and capital support for the Moorbank Logistics Precinct and the significance of this project has been recognised by both the federal and state governments with more than 500 million of combined investment between them. And the New South Wales is uh, government is also additionally contributing to uh, further improvements to the freight uh, system in New South Wales with connections to the port. On the slide you can see here, it shows a site superimposed on the CBD of, of Sydney. Uh, it's massive. And the Moorbank Intermodal Freight Terminal is one of the most important pieces of freight infrastructure being developed in Australia at the moment, and mostly due to its, its value of its location. Moorbank's location in the southwest of Sydney is highly strategic, providing direct access to the M5, M7 motorways, which service key corridors through New South Wales. And in particular, the access provided to Port Botany by Moorbank is unrivalled. It's the only truly bonded logistics estate within Sydney that provides tenants a direct, uninterrupted link to Port Botany, with same-day delivery of containers from the port to the warehouses. Moorbank also provides a freight link to the national rail network. The su supply chain benefits offer offered by these increased accesses uh, to, to freight by rail over road will benefit the tenants of Moorbank enormously, with around 33% of the site already committed, with tenants including West Farmers, Woolworths, Main Freight and Cube Logistics. And we have three additional commitments shortly to be announced. We believe that Moorbank is a leading example of purpose-built industrial infrastructure for the future and representative of trends that we expect to see accelerate in Australia and across all of the East Coast states. This will lead to the delivery of a creative industrial uh, industry-led solutions surrounding and within the precinct, which will include in future multi-level warehousing, high bay warehousing, that will capitalise on that spatial capacity over this very valuable land. Logos has a strong track record of developing multi-storey development in Asia, and we expect Moorbank will be the first precinct in Western Sydney uh, to, to, to capitalise on those skills. If we can turn the uh, background video on now, please, team. Just while I go through some stats at the site, more than $7 billion worth of economic benefits will um, be attributed to this project in Western Sydney, including an $80 million kick for the South Western Sydney precinct. It will create over 1,300 jobs during construction and on completion, circa 7,000 operating jobs will, um, will feature in the precinct. The development of the terminal at the estate will create flow on economic benefits locally, including additional jobs just beyond the precinct boundaries with a broad range of industries that service the terminal and the staff. There's a reduction in congestion growth through the southwestern Sydney will prevail through fewer trucks on the roads including a reduction of nearly 3,000 container movements per day between Port Botany and Moorbank. From a sustainability viewpoint, the environmental benefits that Moorbank will deliver include, in an Australian first, Logos partnered with local company Solar Bay to install the largest rooftop solar and microgrid installation in a single ownership on roofs in Australia. This initial 50 kilowatt save, uh, system will save 67 kilotons of CO2 emissions per year through 100% renewable energy. And this could grow to 120 kilowatts on completion. We expect a reduction of circa 40,000 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions per annum from the precinct. 
and on completion, the Moorbank facility will move 1.5 million shipping containers annually by rail instead of road. In, in terms of what this extrapolates to, it could take more than 2,600 heavy movements, truck movements, off Sydney's roads each day, and a reduction of circa 250,000 kilometres of vehicle movements within Sydney and the interstate network. In addition to that, there's a protection of circa 105 hectares of biodiversity offset areas immediately surrounding the terminal, and that's also a feature for the livability and the operators to, to have some green open space. Expensive green buffers, together with these biodiversity offsets and elements of the site design and layout, will reduce the heat emissions from the site by approximately four degrees. And finally, in terms of progress to date since our acquisition at the end of 21, we've prog progressed the installation of solar infrastructure across 370,000 square metres of space. We've commenced the construction of two of the terminals and two warehouses totalling 110,000 square metres in the Moorbank East Precinct are due for completion this quarter. Um, finally, Main Freight has, uh, has committed and has been our first anchor on the interstate to, adjacent to the uh, IMEX terminal to capitalise on those supply chain benefits with a 55,000 square metre cross dock facility. The only other, the other project I wish to talk about today is our redevelopment of a 13 hectare site in Mascot, which we purchased from Qantas. Logos, backed by Ardia, in the Australian Logistics Vehicle and Australian Super acquired 100% freehold interest in a significant parcel from Qantas near Sydney Airport for 530 million at the end of 21. The land is in a highly desirable and strategic location with immediate proximity to Sydney Kingsford Smith Airport, Port Botany, West Connex and the M5 M8 motorway. It represents the last scalable logistics and commercial development site in the coveted South Sydney precinct. Logos is redeveloping the site into a state-of-the-art four-level ramp-up, logistics, e-commerce and last-mile logistics hub, which will substantially enhance the connectivity of Sydney Airport and provide tenant customers with unparalleled uh, access to major population catchments and transport infrastructure. Upon development completion, the property is forecast to have an end value of in excess of $1.5 billion. And that relationship that we seeded with Qantas uh, resulted in August last year with Logos and Ardia extending that relationship with Qantas in acquiring an additional 8,000 square metre industrial site in St Peter's in South Sydney to develop a specialised facility for CAE and Qantas for Qantas's new Sydney Flight Training Centre. We're very excited to be delivering these significant projects which we believe represent a blueprint for industrial infrastructure opportunities in, the, in Australia and we're leading the way in the delivery of new technological and sustainable solutions for our customers. Back to you. Thanks, Darren. I think it's fair to say we're very proud of both of those projects as a, as a, a large group and organisation, and with their great examples of the large scale logistics and infrastructure opportunities we're working on in not just Australia but also around the region. And there's these, all these projects have significant investments in technology and sustainability, which add value to us as a group and the sector. Now, as we've outlined throughout the presentation, having grown organically over the last 13 odd years, Logos established itself as a key logistics player in the market and across the APAC region. Our ambition is to drive change and sustainability solutions to be ahead of the curve with technological changes and to push into the, real, the infrastructure and real estate sectors, including ports and intermodals. So I think that's all from us. So I'll, I'll now go to anybody for questions. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, you have uh, um, questions coming in. Hang on. Uh, we'll just start with the first question, which is um, what is the uh, transformational business opportunities that you see across the locals business? Look, I think probably as we, you know, we've touched on and, thrown, and shown, in, you know, particularly in Darren's presentation around intermodals, ports, I think definitely what we've learned here is that typically on the infrastructure side of the investments around the, around the world in particular, you know, there's very little real estate experience in, in that infrastructure class. So we've certainly, I think, shown this one in particular, particularly using more banks as an example, that there's, there's big opportunities for us as a group to get into more intermodal in the port sector fairly significant uh, investments 
for the group as well. There, we typically have the same LP investors in both the real estate side that also invest into the infrastructure side. Okay, thank you. Um, the second question that we have is, uh, could you share the underwriting return for More Bank and the mascot project and how <laughs> that has changed? <laughs> Darren, you can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, More Bank and Mascot were significant uh, investments that the, the group and capital made. They were competitive processes that Logos participated on with our, with our capital partners. I don't think I'll share the actual underwritten returns per se. Uh, suffice to say that at the time of entering into both of those acquisitions, we, we, we went in very, very strongly and firmly and convicted on outcomes on the development and outcomes on uh, how those projects would be developed and enhanced further. And we stretched our underwriting to assume higher FSRs in the case of, of Mascot. We certainly stretched our expectations on, on how the development and the GLA at Moorbank would be achieved. And um, it's fair to say that uh, it, whilst there's some risk in terms of making some of those assumptions, our investors are going to receive the benefits of, of pushing the boundaries a little bit on what's going on. So I won't give you an underwritten return. Suffice to say that we are we are pushing the boundaries of, of how much we can build and where we can build it. But I think to that point as well, we have, um, you know, uh, More Bank was underwritten on 850,000 square metres of uh, space. We've now increased that to over a million square metres. So even though construction costs have increased and, and other challenges, we've been able to increase the, the um, GLA across the whole project, which increases returns. Also, I think the fact that rents have increased significantly over the past year, as Phil mentioned, um, you know, has also helped returns. Okay, thank you. Um, last but not least, um Yep. Last but not least, uh, we noted the questions that are coming on the um, on the integration. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, we will take that um, at the uh, concluding Q and A session later. Okay. Thank you. Okay. With that, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.